The chord progression topic in Aralia is important for anyone wanting to improve their harmonic dictation skills. Like all topics, there are a number of levels built into Aralia. Using the default syllabus, if we start with level 1, you can see that we're doing major keys with chords 1 and 5. Let's try level 3, as it includes progressions with the 1, 2, 4, and 5 chords in major and 1, 4, and 5 in minor. Aralia plays the tonic and then the progression. And since I'm practicing, I can replay it. If I were taking a test, I can only replay as many times as the instructor allows when they set up the test. In level 3, I only have to choose the chord names. In a few moments, I'll show you how we can set up a rally to require that we click in the notes from any or all of the four voices in the chord. If I make a mistake, I have the opportunity to try it again since I'm just practicing. Of course, Aralia allows you to progress beyond very basic to very advanced. Not only can I go to a more difficult level in the chord progression, such as level 15, which, as you can see, covers a lot of different chords, I can also go to the advanced chord progression topics. This is where you'll practice chords with half diminished, such as in level 2 seventh chords, and augmented six chords, such as the uh, Neapolitan, Italian, French, and German chords. Now let's make this even more challenging by requiring dictation as well as identification of the chord. This would be a traditional harmonic dictation exercise. Now at level one, it's fairly easy because it just has two chords. moment I'll show you the more advanced levels and also the ability to customize levels. For now though I need to identify the chords and click in the notes in the soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. I can easily create my own custom levels and use them in my own syllabus. If I click on the custom level button here you can see all of the options. This is where I can choose if I want students to enter the notation, if I want them to see the notation, or if I want it hidden. I can control this independently for each voice, making it really easy to set up an instructional sequence that becomes progressively more difficult. Of course, we give you complete flexibility. So if you only want to do choral dictation without identifying the chord names, no problem. Just choose Show or even Hide for the chord names instead of selecting enter which requires students to enter them. You can also decide what assistance you want to provide to students such as the first note, the first chord symbol, or the opportunity to hear their answer and compare it to the original. You can easily select the key signature and determine if it should be shown. You can set the tempo and in tests you can also decide if students are allowed to adjust the tempo. Over here, you can choose how you want to display the chord symbols and inversions. Select a time signature, how long you want the progression to be, and how many cadences you want. Now let's pop over to the Chords and Cadences tab, and this is where the fun begins. We start by choosing a tonality, so let's just do major. Next, we choose the specific chords and inversions we want to be able to draw from. For example, I'll choose the tonic chord in all inversions, along with the subdominant. And as I choose the chords, you can see Aralia builds an available chord vocabulary list. In other words, I'm not forced to choose a random combination of the chords I'm selecting, but instead I can choose which combination of chords I wish to use. Now I select the chord vocabulary I want to use and the cadences for within the exercise and the final cadence. 
In addition to the ability for students to practice and be evaluated on their abilities, the lesson section includes some really valuable materials. In the introduction, we learn about chord progressions and some strategies for listening. There is also a section on labeling chords. Then, an explanation of diatonic triads and seventh chords found in a major scale. Next, there is a series of lessons designed as a reference and to help students understand what to listen for. For example, if we look at the five chord lesson, we can read about the five chord and listen to a progression that includes it. We could do the same for the sixth chord. At the end of the lessons, there's a really handy reference section. We can choose to look at all major or minor chords and listen to them. Either block or arpeggiated. And to help with the context, we can choose to hear the tonic chord first. As you've seen in this video, the chord progressions and advanced chord progressions are very effective tools for improving your understanding of harmony. You can choose to identify names of the chords or the specific pitches in a chord progression, or both. The exercises include a number of built-in levels but you can also customize them to meet your needs. The lessons are also a valuable tool for learning and improving your ability to identify chords and acts as a valuable reference.